Last month, a New York Times columnist wrote a piece about his confusion when he moved to San Francisco five years ago. He said he went to Walgreens looking for a toothbrush and he saw some guy grab some jerky off the shelf and just walk out without paying. And an employee just shrugged, didn't care. And he went to Safeway after that for some groceries and he saw another guy just stuff three wine bottles into his backpack and again, just casually walk out. No intervention. And the writer approached a clerk and said, uh, hey, I'm new here. Is it just optional to pay for things in San Francisco? And it turns out, yes, it is. Now, only somewhat on paper, to be fair, but in practice, a Walgreens by the Bay is an all-you-can-steal buffet. That's why Walgreens has closed 17 stores and counting in San Francisco in recent years, a quarter of the company's retail presence in the city. San Francisco is an epicenter of organized retail crime, according to leadership at competitor company CVS. I like to joke that these blue aviators I have are a collector's item. They're extremely rare. Why? Because I legally purchased these sunglasses at a San Francisco Walgreens. You just don't see that very often. They're one of a kind. There's nothing like them. And I even have the documentation to prove it. I should sell these things on Pawn Stars or something. And the reason those are so rare and that people are stealing them in volumes large enough to make businesses like Walgreens pack up and leave town is because those takings just aren't prosecuted. A lot of the blame is commonly sent to the district attorney and much of that is deserved, but in many of these cases, the DA is simply following California law. And California law that voters directly approved, mind you, it wasn't imposed upon them by some rogue legislature, Proposition 47 in 2014 reclassified theft of goods under $950 in value as a misdemeanor. So this sort of fill your backpack and just walk out style theft is still criminal. It's just low level criminal. And that's if it even gets prosecuted at all. The district attorney, Chase Boudin, ran on a platform of not prosecuting so-called quality of life crimes. You know, San Francisco's most popular hobbies of sleeping on the sidewalk, peeing on the sidewalk, graffitiing the sidewalk, and the petty theft necessary to sustain that sort of public destruction. And on that platform, Boudin defeated his hard right fascist challengers who took extreme positions like car break-ins, sometimes require prosecution. So when you vote for law that says these aren't serious crimes and you vote for a prosecutor who won't prosecute them seriously, you get criminals who don't take the threat of prosecution seriously either. And why would they? Stealing in this city is more likely to earn you public benefits than it is to earn you a jail cell or even public scorn for that matter. It's not even a source of shame. It's the hottest new career opportunity. And so you get scenes like this one posted by a local ABC reporter on Monday night at one of the remaining Walgreens in the city, right near City Hall. Grab your bike, load up your garbage bag, take whatever you want, and shove anyone else out of your way. The San Francisco Chronicle characterized the scene as brazen, but the only thing that's brazen is that security guard half-assedly attempting to grab that guy's loot bag on his way out of the store. That was the only thing that's actually against policy here. Because that sort of intervention is a workplace violation at Walgreens and CVS stores in San Francisco. Speaking with the New York Times, the director of the retail crime division at CVS says employees, including security guards, are instructed not to pursue suspected thieves because encounters have become too dangerous. He says CVS security officers are assaulted on a regular basis in San Francisco, which makes you wonder what any of this illusion of security personnel or law or justice at all is even for. Why should a security guard who's not allowed to intervene call 911 to get cops who won't arrest this guy to bring him to a prosecutor who won't charge him anyway and don't bother thinking that through. In the time it takes you to consider that question, you'll just get shoved out of the way by someone with important criminal business, just like these spectators were. And plenty of the replies to this video posted by the reporter will tell you that what you just saw is actually a good outcome, correctly handled. 
Clearly, this thief is just down on his luck. He resorted to this behavior because he has no other choice in life, and nobody's life is worth losing just to protect Walgreens merchandise anyway. So the fact that nobody got hurt, plus it was all captured on video, is a win-win. All of these responses rest on broken premises. The first being that video of the crime will ensure its prosecution. It won't, because remember, this is a quality of life crime. The criminal had to do this to feed his family. The criminal is actually a good guy who wants to get better and improve beyond this tragic necessity, so he shouldn't be punished, which is itself another broken premise. If criminals have to do this to feed their families, why is this retail theft becoming a cottage industry? These thieves are simply reselling their stolen merchandise on the streets, often so unafraid of prosecution, they set up shop immediately nearby. A member of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors tells the New York Times he recently saw half a Walgreens worth of stolen inventory being resold at an outdoor market only six blocks away from the store. And if these criminals want to get better and to stop living a life of crime, why isn't the leniency enabling them to do that? Why is theft at Walgreens in San Francisco four times the average for Walgreens stores elsewhere nationally? Why are 42% of CVS's theft losses in the Bay Area from just 12 San Francisco stores, which are only 8% of their Bay Area retail presence? Why are San Francisco police saying criminals are becoming bolder repeat offenders? instead of kinder, gentler, reformed model citizens? Well, maybe it's because Walgreens is mean. That's the perspective of some in these neighborhoods where Walgreens is closing up shop. When a Walgreens in the Tenderloin announced its closure in March, residents organized a petition not to clean up the crime that necessitated this closure, but to shame Walgreens for the decision. Petition authors wrote, Walgreens has an annual revenue of around $139.5 billion dollars, we think they can afford to keep needed stores like this open. We cannot allow profit-driven, greedy corporations to further traumatize and abandon their responsibility to the community. People over profits, wrote a signatory. Well, first of all, if they're a greedy, profit-driven, traumatizing corporation, why would you patronize them? Shouldn't you be glad that such evil is leaving town? But more to the point, Walgreens does not have an obligation to serve you. You do not own them, or their property, or their labor. Just like you go to Walgreens because it benefits you, Walgreens only stays open if it benefits them. For a voluntary transaction to work, both parties have to agree to it. And for both parties to agree to it, usually it has to benefit both. Nobody's a bad guy for walking away from a deal that harms him. And maybe that deal could be maintained if we stopped and punished the actual bad guys who make that deal impossible, instead of pretending that the bad guys are really just good guys to be who are just down on their luck at the moment. But if we just be nice enough to them, eventually they'll change their ways. They won't. That's nonsense. You want your Walgreens pharmacy? Then hold the people who victimize it to account. Don't tell the pharmacy just to accept the abuse. Because the longer we entertain this nonsense that it's the store's job to accommodate these criminals, and not the criminal's job to stop stealing from these stores, the fewer of these stores there will be. And these petitioners and their friends in city government will get their wish of freedom from corporate oppression that has the city under its greedy thumb. Just don't complain when, instead of a freshly packaged Colgate, you're bartering with a hobo for a used toothbrush when a flyby pigeon steals it anyway. Because remember, that pigeon did nothing wrong. It was only a quality of life crime. Thanks, as always, for listening and for supporting this channel. Always appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Gab. That is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to coming out and chatting my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Goodbye.